and welcome to Anton Math and in this video we're going to be talking about the Pythagorean identities. Now there's three Pythagorean identities that come in useful and um, I'm not going to just list them for you. Um, you know you can you can use a book for that. I'm going to go ahead and derive all three of these for you. Now these three identities are three identities that I typically don't uh, have my students memorize. Rather I have them memorize how to find these identities. They're pretty simple to just find on your own and we're going to go ahead and go through that right now and you'll see these ones just kind of jump out at us given what we know already about the unit circle and our trigonometric functions. Now the first one, the first one is our base Pythagorean identity and this one actually you will probably end up memorizing just because you will see it so often. Now it comes from the fact that our unit circle has an equation as we've talked about of x squared plus y squared equals 1, doesn't it? And I know that for any point x, y on the unit circle that satisfies this equation, I can define my trigonometric functions cosine equal to x and sine equal to y for any value of t, right? Just to say that again, for any real number t, I know that if I have a real number t no matter where it ends me, that gives me a terminal point that satisfies this equation, right? This point x, y, this x and y satisfy this equation. And at this point, I can define cosine of t is equal to x and sine of t is equal to y. So just plugging that in directly, I have cosine squared of t. Now notice I put this squared before the t. That means I'm squaring the entire function cosine. This is the same thing as writing cosine of t squared. Okay, that's what this notation means. This should not be confused with cosine of t squared. All right, I know it, it, you say it the same way, but seeing it written down, you can see uh, how that might be confusing. So be careful there. If, if that squared is before the t, that means I'm squaring the entire function after I plug in t and figure out what it is. Okay, so moving on. I plug this and I get cosine of t squared plus sine squared of t is equal to 1. That's it, right? I know that because this x and y are points on the unit circle, there's going to be some t where this is equivalent. So that's my first Pythagorean identity. Easy peasy, right? Um, and I usually write sine squared first, but it doesn't matter. Uh, first Pythagorean identity. All right, now after we have this first one, we can use this one to find our other two. Now the way that I'm going to find my next Pythagorean identity is I'm going to divide this first Pythagorean identity that we found, I'm going to divide it through by cosine squared. And that's it. So if I divide this through by cosine squared, that means I divide every term by cosine squared. I'm dividing both sides by cosine squared. This gives me a whole new equation, right? Cosine squared over cosine squared, well that's just 1. Sine squared over cosine squared, that's the same thing as sine t over cosine t that whole thing squared, isn't it, right? Sine squared over cosine squared is the same as sine over cosine, the entire quantity squared. And over on the right here, I have one over cosine squared. That's the same as the entire quantity, one over cosine of t quantity squared, isn't it? Well, we have functions for these. This is the same as one plus sine t over cosine t, that's the same as y over x, or in other words, the same as tangent and 1 over cosine t, or in other words, 1 over x, we know this is secant. So there we have it, that's my second Pythagorean identity. 
2, 1 plus tangent squared. Actually, I'm going to write this a different way because I usually do in class, and now I'm uh, probably confusing some of you. Tangent squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. All right, and we have one more. And we're going to find this third one in almost exactly the way that we found the second one. Only well, now, instead of dividing through by cosine squared, I'm going to divide through by sine squared. Let me change here. All right, divide both sides through by sine squared. I get cosine squared over sine squared. That's the same thing as cosine over sine, the entire quantity squared. Sine squared over sine squared, well, that's just 1, isn't it? And 1 over sine squared is the same as 1 over sine. Squared. And again, we have functions that we can plug in for this. Cosine over sine, that's the same as x over y, or in other words, cotangent. And with cotangent, you notice I usually use those brackets with t, otherwise it looks a little bit strange to me. Plus 1. And 1 over sine, that's the same as 1 over y, or in other words, cosecant. Boom. There we go. That's our third Pythagorean identity. And again, I usually write this in this order here, 1 plus cotangent squared of t is equal to cosecant squared of t. And there we go. There's our three Pythagorean identities. Now we're going to be using these a lot through this course, and you should be familiar with these, but either I would recommend either just memorizing this first one and remembering that you can derive the other two just the same way we did here by dividing through both sides by either sine squared or cosine squared, or just remember that it all follows from the equation of our unit circle, right, as so much of what we've done so far does. Now, this finishes up the material for this section. I am going to add one more video for this section, just doing some problem examples. So if you want to see some problems, get a little bit of help in some homework type problems in this material, uh, that'll be in the next video.